In A&E, our next patient has had an unusual accident. Luckily, she's in the right place. <laughs> In Sheffield Children's Hospital, 12-year-old Isabel has arrived with her dad. Ooh, she looks a bit mucky. What's gone on there, then? I've hurt my hand. I don't know. I'm not sure if it's going to be broken or not. So, how did she manage this muddy mishap? It was a beautiful spring day, and Isabel was out with her horse, Harvey. Oh, that explains the muddy boots, then. Hey, Chris, where's her riding hat? She wasn't wearing one, Zand. Oh, that's not a good idea. I know, but off she went. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. Flowers were blooming, lambs were frolicking, birds were tweeting. I can't see what the problem is here, Chris. Just wait, Aunt, because all of a sudden, Harvey bolted. As fast as you're saying, Bolt? Well, kind of. Isabel tried to stop Harvey, but she couldn't. She was dragged along while Harvey trampled over her hand. Lucky she didn't bump her head, Chris. Ouch! He's quite fast, dear. No kidding! It's time for Dr John Griffiths to check out Isabel's hoof. I mean hand. What do you reckon, Doc? Right. I'm just going to prod and poke, and I want you to tell me if there's any soreness, all right? Get starts to hurt about there. Yeah. yeah. Dr John checks for any nerve damage. Does it feel the same on both sides? It tickles more on that side. Tickles more on that side. There is a chance that she does have a fracture, but we're going to do an X-ray and find out. This is the stuff nightmares are made from. Oh, Zand, enough of the horse jokes. It's off to the X-ray department to find out what the damage is. I'm going to start with your hand and then I'll do your wrist, all right? OK. There are 27 bones in your hand. Eight of these are in your wrist. Any of these bones could have been broken by Harvey's hoof. But it's the left side of Isabel's hand that Dr John is most concerned about. So, if we look at the bones, there's no real breaks in the bone. All the lines are nice and smooth. So, I think you've probably dodged the bullet. Or a bolting horse, more like. Great news, Isabel. Everything looks A-OK. -okay. A simple splint to support Isabel's wrist for a few days, and she'll be on the mend. Thank you. Take care. See you later. Isabel's got one last message for her main man. Harvey, I'm not impressed. I'm not surprised. <laughs> right, I love a little pony there and I won't hate you forever. <laughs> oh, let's saddle up and get out of here. Bye. Bye. So we'll see you next time for more Operation Out. <laughs> in accident and emergency, there's another patient in need of some help. Well, let's meet her. All right. In Liverpool, eight-year-old Lauren is in accident and emergency with her mum, Nan, and a serious fit of the giggles. <laughs> I'm assuming a fit of the giggles isn't the reason she's come to hospital, Chris. <laughs> no, Zond, it's to do with the sling holding up her right arm. Yeah, it's swollen. And my fingers are all sweaty. But how did her arm get swollen, sweaty and in a sling? Well, Zond, it was the final of the handstand Olympics. What? Handstands are in the Olympics? Don't be ridiculous, I'm joking. Lauren was at school, but she was doing a perfect handstand. Huh, it really was, wasn't it? I know. But out of nowhere, one of her classmates accidentally bumped into her... ..toppling Lauren over. And...? She bent her wrist. Ouch. It must be really sore. I do love a foot. She's one tough lady. But what do you think you've done to your arm, Lauren? That I broke it. Painful. Time for an X-ray to see if Lauren's diagnosis is right. Okay, all finished. Photo shoot over. Time for an examination with nurse practitioner Sarah Jackson. Okay, can you try and straighten your elbow out for me? <laughs> it's okay. Lauren's arm is clearly causing her some pain, and the X-rays reveal why. She's got two fractures in her wrist. I've got my first broken bone. Two broken bones. First two broken bones then. To keep Lauren's wrist straight and help it heal, she'll wear a temporary arm splint until she comes back to have a plaster cast applied. Does that feel okay? And quicker than you can say, Olympic gold medal handstand champion Lauren's back.
The plaster is moulded to Lauren's arm, and once it sets, we'll hold it in place to allow the fracture to heal. That's your cast on, I just need to give you the sling now. Get the sling. Go about these, right? You can wear these as a bandana as well. Looking good. Lauren will need to keep the cast on her arm for two weeks. Bye. Then she can get back to her handstands. But will she? I think so, because I like doing handstands. Well, be careful, Lauren. Mind that arm. Bye. Bye. That's not amazing, Sand. Let's go to accident and emergency and see how our patient's getting along. We're back in Manchester with six-year-old Rachel and her cut hand. Rachel was playing football with her sister in the garden and the crowd were going wild. There they are. And then she slipped and cut her hand on a lurking piece of glass. Her cut was very deep, so she needs an operation to check if the movement in her hand is affected. Dan explains how serious this could be. When you're playing on the Xbox, you'll be able to move around the same, will you? So if you have the operation, you'll be able to game again. Should we get this operation done then, Rachel? Ready to go. Once Rachel's asleep, the operating team examine the injury and find that the glass has cut through the muscle and the nerve that give sensation to two of her fingers. She's had a very lucky escape because the glass had narrowly missed another important nerve by just one millimetre. The doctors repair the damage and when she heals, Rachel will be as good as new. After Rachel wakes up from the operation, she comes to a decision. I'm not going to play football for a while. I think that's a thumbs up. Yep, there's the thumb. Now the doctors give her the all clear to go home. After the surgery, Rachel made a great recovery and has full use of her hand again. Hi. Oh, my that hand. It's time to meet our next patient. It's another one of our favourites. Here he is. In Manchester, seven-year-old Tyler has come in with his great gran. What have you done, Tyler? I burnt my hand. You burnt your hand? Oh, dear. It's a bit painful. The burn has been wrapped in cling film by a nurse to protect it. But how did it happen, Tyler? I was trying to make myself a brew. Ah, a cup of tea. Two sugars, please. I really, really like brews. I love Dunkin' Biscuits in there. My favourite biscuit is um, custard cream. Nice one, Tyler. Sounds yummy. In fact, Zand, it's that custard cream craving that got him into this mess in the first place. Tyler is a big tea drinker. Ooh, me too. He loves nothing more than putting his feet up with a brew and dunking his custard creams in it. Ooh, me too. Because Tyler's only seven, he asked his big brother James to fix him a cuppa. But James said no. Brotherly love, eh? So Tyler set about making his own cup of tea. But the kettle was full and heavy. As Tyler poured, the kettle slipped and the boiling water went all over his hand. Ouch! Here's Dr Chucks Nawalia to take a look at that painful palm. Hello, Tyler, how are you? I'm all right. So what's been happening to you today? I've burnt myself. OK, can you feel any pains or tingling on your hands, like pins? Yeah. And where are you feeling it? In my thumb. Can you feel me touching you? You can feel it. Your skin is made up of layers of skin cells, fat, tissue and blood vessels. When you burn or scold yourself, the deeper these layers get damaged, the worse the burn will be. More minor burns only affect the top layer, and that's what's happened to Tyler's hand. But it still hurts. Tyler's lucky he had a minor burn. He just needs some painkillers, anti-inflammatories. He's going to be fine. That's great news. Now it's over to Nurse Samira to give the burn a good clean with sterile water before dressing it. All right, so you need to keep this clean and dry, OK? Yep. Now you've got your digits dressed, I've got another burning question for you, Tyler. What was the worst bit about today? I'm not on a brew. Oh, never mind. Let's hope your brother's got the kettle on and that he's stocked up on custard creams. Bye! In the UK, over 5 million people each year have to visit an emergency department. And some cases are stranger than others. Let's meet the next patient. In Liverpool, 14-year-old Kyle has come in complaining of a sore and swollen hand after a run-in with a wall. When I woke up the next morning when it was just dead, swollen and bruised and hurting. Hang on a minute, what happened with this wall? 
Kyle was in his Spanish class at school, in the middle of an oral exam. The teacher was firing questions at him. Come te llamas? ¿E dónde vives? The questions were coming thick and fast. I like the lizard. ¿Qué deseo comer? ¿Qué hora es el próximo tren? Uh-oh, he'd forgotten everything he knew. Frustrated and angry with himself, he shot out of the classroom. It was then that the wall, completely unprovoked, suddenly and brutally hit Kyle's hand. OK, Kyle whacked the wall with his hand. Ouch! It was a stupid thing to do. Si, estupido! But that hand does look pretty painful. I was doing swimming yesterday in school PE. That hurt. Just touching the water in my hand. Best get you looked at then, Kyle. You'll have to fess up to Sister Joe what you've done, though, mi amigo. I had a Spanish test and I failed, so I got angry and disappointed and I just hit the wall. I can see the bruise in there. All right, what we'll do is we'll send you for an X-ray and take it from there. X-ray it is, then. And I have a feeling it's going to be more than a sprain. And while we wait for the results, come on, Carl, let's have another go at that Spanish. How do you say I've hurt my hand? And with the walls trembling with fear in case he gets it wrong... You might know I smile. That'll do. Walls, relax. He's got it. Enter Dr Bimmel Meta. He's been checking out Kyle's x-ray to find out why that hand hurts. If you look on this side, you can see it's all nice and smooth. But here, there's a funny bump. Yep, that funny bump might not look like much, but it's actually a painful fracture. Better break the news to Kyle. As expected, because walls are harder than bones, the wall's one, and your bones are broken. That's called a boxer's fracture. Boxer's fractures are one of the most common hand breaks doctors see. Usually caused when a closed fist hits something immovable, like a wall, they can be extremely painful. So, the next time you feel frustrated, you might just want to stop and think. It's not a serious fracture, and the main thing he's going to have is that it's going to be sore over the next two to three weeks. Luckily for Kyle, there's no big plaster cast. OK, so if you just keep that clean and dry. Fingers strapped together, and he's on his way home. Adios, amigo. Bye. Medical teams always expect the unexpected. Let's see how they deal with this patient. This is nine-year-old Ellie, and she's in hospital with a painful wrist. I was wearing um, high heels, like, that big. Go on. They're my sisters. I love them. They're purple, and they're, they're gorgeous. Yeah, got it. They sound fabulous. I had one, and my other mate had one. And me and my mate was running, and I was trying to chase after my mate, and then we fell. Hang on. Who had what on? Let's get this story straight. Ellie was at home with her friend, trying on clothes. Is that a sandwich? Yes. Then Ellie spotted her favourite dress-up item, her sister's purple high heel shoes. Fabulous. So, she put one on. Uh, hang on. Her mates put the other one on. Yeah, don't ask. And then they ran down the street. Uh... Don't ask. <laughs> when all of a sudden... Watch out! Ellie tripped and fell onto her hand. Ouch. This is how I ended up in the hospital. All because of the high heels. But they were fabulous. And purple. Anyway, let's meet Dr Mark Ansell. He's the man to sort that wrist out. So, what's happened? I was in my sister's high heels. I was running down the street and I fell. Mind if I have a little look at you? Yeah. Oof. So, where's it hurt? It, like, round here. Dr Mark will need to examine Ellie's hand and wrist thoroughly to find out just what the problem might be. I'd say the problem's running in high heels. You mean heel? She only had one on. That's the sore right here, where I'm touching yeah. my finger. The rest is kind of OK. Um, and a little bit here. Yeah. OK. The one thing I'm a little bit concerned about is there's a little bone called the scaphoid, yeah. and she's a bit tender on that. I'm just going to look at the x-rays and see if there's anything that we need to fix. Is that OK? The human hand is made of 27 bones. Your fingers alone contain 14 bones called the phalanges. And then there are five metacarpals stretching through your palm, and eight carpal bones in your wrist. And this is right where Ellie is feeling the pain. The bone that I was a little bit curious about is this one here. It's called the scaphoid. It doesn't appear to be anything there. And there's no gross deformity, so that there's, there's not a particularly obvious break. It's good news for Ellie. OK, so 
I've had a look at the x-rays and I can't find any obvious break of the bone or anything like that. Uh, in some circumstances there can be a little break that you can't see in the first 24 hours, but at the moment I, I, I think that's unlikely, but we're gonna go on the side of caution. So, to help Ellie's hand heal, she's getting a scaphoid splint to wear. You wouldn't happen to have that in purple, would you? It's just a support uh, to hold the thumb in a nice position. I'm just glad that they give me this so this might make it better. Splinted up, Ellie can head home in some nice, sensible... We've got some incredible body tricks. Want to find out how to stop your friends from being able to control the movement of their foot? So I want you to take your right foot, stick it out in front of you, and now I want you to make circles like that clockwise. So if you're looking at a clock face, I want you to make a circle around the clock face the same direction the hands move. Very good. So everyone can do that. It's easy, isn't it? So without touching, I'm going to stop you being able to do that. What I want you to do is get your right finger up in the air. OK, now I want you to trace the number six big in the air, like that. And I want you to keep doing it. So keep, see if you can keep your foot spinning clockwise while you make a big number six. OK, so who understands why you can't do the trick? Because your finger is going the opposite direction to your foot, so it kind of confuses your brain. Excellent work, Tess. When we draw the number six, it's an anti-clockwise movement. When we try to move our foot clockwise, our brain gets confused and tries to make the move in the same direction. Your brain finds it very hard to coordinate two circles, one going that way and one going the other way. But some of you found that if you drew the letter six clockwise, it's very easy, because everything moves in the same direction. I fooled with all of your brains. And that's why this lot will never be able to do it. And we bet you can't either. We've got some incredible body tricks for you to show your friends. Want to make your arms float all by themselves? Well, that's what this lot are trying to do. Come on, Paul, push harder. Believe it or not, their arms are rising up completely on their own. They're just like a wee! It's making my hands move. When I go like this, it rises. I actually feel like my hands are rising up. That's quite weird. So how is this possible? What do we do to make it happen? First, you need to push your hands against each other like this. With the person on the inside pushing out and the person on the outside pushing in. Do this really hard against each other for as long as you can. Then let go and the person with the arms on the inside needs to relax and then see what happens. Now, who thinks they can explain why it worked? If the person's putting pressure, like, is pushing, and then you're pushing really hard back, if they let go, like, really quickly and you're still pushing, your arms will just go, like, bounce and they'll go up. Well, Lorenzo is right. Because your arms are pushing so hard against your partners, when you stop, it takes your arms a little time to relax and realise that the force has gone and this is what makes your arms float. Right, so what happens is you're tensing all your muscles and then when you relax, the muscles that were tense are still pulling your arms up. So all these muscles that have been tense, you're relaxing the push in, and the, the muscles that are on the outside of your arms are still quite tense, and they're just making it feel like your arms are lifting up. He thinks Lorenzo's explanation was better. <laughs> OK, you're right. Lorenzo was better. <laughs> <laughs>